Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Money in the Law. Always here you. On, Always you on, go first. Well, no, I, you asked me to go first, and uh, we're right, going to do finish, it together. Finish the intro. Welcome to Money in the Law on MyFM 101.3. I'm your host, John Drohan, joined with my, <laughs> with my co-host, Jay Marston. And, of course, the Holliston Cable Access TV is represented here by none other than our dear friend Christian. And we're here on MyFM 101.3 talking to you on Saturday morning and telling you, all the things about money and all the things that about about law and legal things that are important. And how do we do it? Oh, we do it. Uh, first of all, we do it uh, in tandem together. <laughs> talk about uh, all the. I things do it with that, my co-host. All, all the things that are coordinated that uh, that come in to talk about uh, these two uh, critical but yet um, very very important issues that uh, <laughs> that need they they need some massaging and some manhandling and they need to be discussed. In concert. And I we're the men to do it. We, we are, are we the are two the, men to do it. Not to sound sexist. By the, but way, we are the, by the way, we're doing it our favorite late, uh, 4th of July weekend. So if for some reason you hear this conversation going on at a barbecue, because we haven't talked about it, the whole purpose of it is just to have a casual conversation. This weekend is barbecue weekend. And you could be, depending on how you play your cards, at a, at a, at a money in the law barbecue. And you might hear one of us, maybe both of us. Maybe we're at the same barbecue. I mean... The, the Money in the Law barbecue, that, that tour is probably going to start this summer. <laughs> um, and you're right. If you, however, if you are at a barbecue at this particular hour, if you're listening to this live, um, you're probably a little early. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Early for the barbecue. You started very early. But that's okay. Early. But that's oh, you're okay. finishing up from last night. Either what that or you're tailgating somewhere and you yeah. got there, you, you know, you got the great parking spot. So, yeah, good stuff. Good so, stuff. Um, what we do is we will explain things to you. We will try and put things, uh, you know, and we're not saying it's a boring topic. We're not saying that finance is a boring topic. No. We're not saying that no. law is a boring topic at all. No we, I find, we find it so fascinating. Exciting. fascinating. So exciting. But not, we're, our, our feelings aren't shared by everyone. So this is what we do. We find a way to make this exciting, to make it fascinating, to make you say, you know what? I always had a question about that. I should have gone to law school. And I should have gone to law school. I, would I should have, have been a finance I, guy. I would have gone to law yeah, school. Yeah. But I have, I have a question about that. So you know what? I'm, but I'm afraid to ask because I don't want to sound stupid. Now, don't feel stupid anymore. No you, such thing. Right here. Right no here. Such thing. Right here. It's like the big hug. Bring everybody in. <laughs> and, eh, and we're going to figure it out. We're oh, all yeah. going to figure it out oh, together. Oh, yeah. We're going to figure it out. Oh, yeah. So, well, so it's Fourth of July weekend. It is. And, you know, we will always start the show by talking about something that has nothing to do with neither money nor the law, nor about how tall you've gotten. Yeah. Look at you. Yeah. Crazy. That's a crazy microphone. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and, and because it's a big, it's a big summer weekend, we, we, you know, we, Jay and I are very, we're, we're very astute with the calendar. We'll always, we'll always explain to you exactly where we are on the calendar. Fixate on the calendar. And, well, we because are. the calendar drives a lot of things in finance. It drives a lot of things in, you know, in both of our practices and how, you know, like, <laughs> what on God's sure, green sure earth are you this guy, almost, <laughs> We're having a little microphone trouble here. He's, he's got it. He figured it's it out. Crazy. He, he jerry-rigged it. Well yeah. MacGyvered it. it. MacGyvered it. Yeah. So what... We will we'll, we'll identify kind of some, some time periods or some things that, like some, some time, times on the calendar where, you know what, this could be a critical time. And I, and I think that this is a critical time, oh, this 4th of July, because A, it's the start of summer. I mean, for all intents and purposes, it's the start of summer. We've always said, well, Memorial Day is kind of the start of summer, but yeah, kids are right. out of school. Yeah, yeah weather stinks. Yeah, the, yeah. The wet, well, but, but the kids are, are now out of school, right. and now you know we've, it's kind of starting to kick off. And this is really like the big vacation. A lot of people will end up going away, at least for the four-day, because, well, yeah, in this case, it's, it could even be a five-day if you get lucky, oh, yeah, right? Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Because the fourth falls on the Tuesday. So, well, let's start off. What are you? Are you going down to where I think you're going? Yeah, we're heading down the Cape. Heading down the Cape. It's all about the Cape, and uh, you know, we'll hang out on the beach and have some family down, hopefully, and uh, yeah, just spend some time just chilling out. You know? If I didn't spend Fourth of July in Cape Cod, I would. I, I don't know. I would think I was in some kind of. Yeah. I know. I know. Like yeah. you're in some type of prison. Some yeah. type of, some I, type of unfortunately, sentence. unfortunately, I'm not, uh, mostly everybody else feels that way. Yes. So yeah. So everybody is down there. And I, I think mean, most people who might be on the Cape with you are. I feel like they've been sentenced <laughs> to some type of prison term. That's probably what happens. We are down on the. Yeah. Cape. Yeah, everybody yeah. goes down the Cape Cod. It's really an island, right? It sinks a little That's bit. True. Yeah, That's true. So, it is an island. Yeah. yeah. It is an island. Uh, uh, so, what do you got planned? Anything we're going. What do you think? Nice. Going to still my mother's house in Cape Cod. Excellent. Which is always and it's good because. 
because everybody kind of comes in. My sister will be in. My other sister won't be in because she's in Alaska. Oh, of course. So right. we had, yeah, so she's decided, you know, what, what is more dangerous, the bears in Alaska or the sharks in Cape Cod? <laughs> oh, the and then family, we talked about oh, the family at mom's house. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, all right, all right. Yeah, my, my brother will be down. My brother's with his new baby, with his oh. new baby boy, Milo. Oh. How so old is Milo? Milo is four four months old. All right. Four, have you, seen your, have you seen your brother since? Like, have you hung out with your brother since the baby? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. I've gone right. down I, and I've met the my man. Um, yeah, he's it, and my brother's a, my brother. Well, you've never met my brother. No, when, but when you do, you'll you you'll get it. He's, all right. Yeah, he's we'll all one, come together. He's a one man show. All right. Really That's is. good to know. That's good to know. All right. So uh, all right. So great. Um, the other thing that we I'd, I'd like to address right now that I'm upset with. Okay. Is that I, it's. Because it's summer, I feel the overwhelming urge to kind of go throwback into what we used to do when we used to actually do the show live on Saturday. And I feel like that, call me crazy, beer tastes better in summer. Oh. I, and I, I, I don't know, please, I don't know why. Yeah, no. I, don't, I can't explain it. There's no scientific reason for it. But to me, beer tastes better. Yeah. No, once that temperature gets over the 60-degree mark with some degree of consistency, uh, I used degree twice there, uh, it it absolutely does taste better, and, and we've joked about this in the show. And this was actually part of the show earlier on. When we would do this. There's no end to the options that you might have for some type of summer uh. beverage consumption plan that you might pull together. Because you can go straight like, right down the middle of the fairway with a couple of Coronas, or you do some right, Land that, Shark, or maybe you go some Pacifico. I see showing up at a the, bunch of different places. Or the places. Sam Summer, the very you know, the secular not Sam a, Summer. Not a fan. I don't know. I don't. I'm not either. Yeah, but I'm saying yeah. I we're, we're I think we're a minority. I think there, there's a lot of fans oh yeah. Out there. Then you see it everywhere. Yeah. You see it, every event you go to. It's like the go to. Yeah. But uh, but then there's I mean then there's eighty. You want to get down the shandy uh, rabbit hole of how many different you know you go with lemon shandy. That is a rabbit hole. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, it just a, gets it gets to the point that it's insane. <laughs> that's there's like a rabbit so, hole. Ricky Ticky Tavi wouldn't go. Yeah down yeah. There's so <laughs> many options. So yeah, that is the season. It's uh it's it's the right season. Do for you it. ever wonder how guys who actually live in Florida and live above sixty degrees all year <laughs> round actually do it? How do oh, I don't think they live long. That's I, what I think happens. I think that's why they're not a lot of them down there. How do you that's guys right. do it? That's right. That's right. That's why I'm not down there. Yeah, and so so as I was driving in today, and I'm thinking about like why I wish that we were I wish we were back on our I wish we were providing that service. It was an additional <laughs> service to what we did. We would actually the value no, add I, brought other, to you by <laughs> my other, FM. That's other right. Other than the, the the sheer genius that comes from the financial world yeah. and from the from the legal world, as we would tell you what essentially what beer we're drinking that and we how can. good it tastes. That's right. That's right. That's exactly right. And everyone got to, and everyone got to figure out. Whether or not they need to get their state plan done, can they retire, and what should I have as a beverage for the weekend? So I know it was for, a good, good, good mix. Good, good. We about to bring that back. We, we'll see. <laughs> we have to. We'll have, talk I don't know. I, I don't know. There may be something with that. With FM. Be, they might have changed the rules a little bit. Yeah, bigger FM, footprint. Now we're not FM under the radar change, anymore. That's FM right. That's right. The rules. That's right. Someone, someone will actually be like, hey, what, what, is, what are these guys doing? Oh, yeah. was that, hold on one second, Mr. <laughs> FCC. Did you hear that? Yeah, that's right. Could be an issue. Could be an issue. <laughs> it's Fred, Chuck, and Chuck. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. That's right. All right. So, so, you talk, so you were talking about. So here's one of the things I think is very funny around Fourth of July. I mean, this is a legit conversation. This has come up recently with a couple of people I've talked to. So. I've talked to some people who, who either, like their kids are either back for the summer, right? Yep. So they're saying, you know, now they're kind of wrapping their head around their new, yes, they have their new 4th of July plans, right? And those new 4th of July plans involve incorporating the comings and goings of their now college age All right, so that's what I was going to say. So right? you're talking about the college kids that have come back that's from, right, come that's back right. from so, college. So it's either they've come back or these are the college age kids that they thought were coming back, and, and they didn't come back. Gone. Yeah. They said, you know what? Guess what? Guess where I'm Bel staying. Believe it or not, we got a better deal <laughs> down on the fill-in-the-blanks, <laughs> and it usually ends up in something ocean beachy thing where right. they're like, I'm working down there. I'm not coming home for the summer. Right? Right. Or, or internships slash yeah, New York right. City. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, so, you get, so you get two, you get this, this cross-section of folks who are dealing with, and we've talked about this on the show before. We jokingly said to people, hey, you know, when you come back from summer vacation, that's a test run for what you want your retirement to look like, right? You did stuff for a week or two or however long your vacation was that gave you a sense of what would retirement look like, right? right? Did you What's it going to look like not having to manage people or less people than, right. than you're used to doing? So now you get this summer situation where you have folks who either their kids are off doing their own thing, they're working, and they're, they're completely you know, uh, engaged in some other endeavor, or they're not home at all. And so I get friends of mine who are saying, you know, we're, we're sort of coming to terms with our new world order. Yeah. 
And 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 just well, right. So so when when the kids eventually leave the nest, right? Yep. When they yep. when they you know when they're you know they graduate college or they 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 move out, right? Yep. You know when kids yep. I, I move out for good, like mom yep. and dad, I am moving. Yeah, out. real like, world ready. That we all we've all done it, right? Well, all of us grown ups have it. Well, most of us have moved out of the yeah. house. So there's that bit, right? But once they do that, then. You still have contact with them. You still sure. like are you still going to see them? There's still like plans that are made, and but this college, this is like an in between because they're, you know, you still you you haven't let go. You have no. you, you know as far no, as you're you concerned, still want to know what's going on. Yeah, Their you, lives are different. You have yep. to you know, like, I, and we do it with my daughter, right? So we're like, hey, so what time are you going to be home? And it was it's funny you bring it up because so she's back now. She has a full time job. Praise Jesus that she has a full time job. Yep. So, but she's also you know she has friends and she has like a social life. So. But she doesn't. She's she'll go. You know, she's still like in that. Well, I'm. I can kind of do what I want, and, and we sort of pretty let pretty much let her do it. But yeah, on a, on, a, on a regular night, like on a Wednesday night, on a school night, yeah. or a, on a work night now, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. She'll go out and hang out with her friends, and she won't come home. And you know, you're just. You're, I'm. I'm not in that mode where I can go to sleep. Like, right. or I can just be like, I can shut it down. And be like, hey, you know, the lights will be all off. You know, unlock the alarm and do yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I find myself kind of hanging. It's like one, you know, one o'clock in the morning, and she's rolling in. I'm like, no, no, no. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no. We are not doing this anymore. Yeah. Like tomorrow's a work day. I got to get up early, and so do you. Yeah. What? Well, what do you mean? Yeah. yeah. So, well, I, I guess my point is, we've used the idea of vacation as a a dry one, for, a dry run for what you want retirement to be like. So when the kids are now out of the house, this is arguably a dry run to start thinking about. That mental transition, right? right? So think about, you know, if you're if the kids are out if the kids are out the door and you're fifty, well you're gonna figure out how many more years, if you will, assuming there's no issue that comes up that you can't plan for, you know, no black swan events, how long (laughs) do you think you're gonna gonna work? And 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 is and is this it? Like is 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 this where you're gonna make your forever home? Or are you really starting to think without somebody who, you know, arguably you're gonna keep an eye on them, but like this is it. This is the part of your life that you've planned for 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 thirty years, right? You, right? And you knew it was coming. Yeah. Right? You you knew it was coming. And 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 I you I think it's a good point. Like it sneaks up on people. Like Absolutely it really does. It does. Like you like before you know it, you're like well wait a minute this I, I we haven't kind of been talking about this change and maybe you know maybe if your kid like does an internship somewhere or yep. they go study abroad for the summer or something like that you kind of get you you kind of get like led into it a little bit slower than other people. But you're right. This is the time where you're like hey okay hey. What do I do? What what what's my what are my next moves right now? That's because right. because here we are, you know, and this is what our this is what our, this is this is this is decision time. And, you know, in, in the military we talk about this is like a decision point. So when you get to this point, you des- you make a decision like is am I staying on this path right. or now do I start thinking about where I where I want to be like in my next terrain feature in my next in my you know my you know five year ten years like where do I want to end? Well, up? and re- and remember for a lot of folks who are going through this right now, what did they also just pick up that they didn't realize they had? Like two grand oh. a month in found income, right? Oh, you're that, talking, was, you're that they were stroking a check to a tuition services company for the last four years. So say, now the kids are a month? That's the kids, awesome. the kids are out the door, right? <laughs> and they're like, guess what? All that money we were paying to those college, we're not paid anymore, yeah. right? We're done. Yeah. We paid the bill, right? There might be some loans and some other issues out there, but they're not on the hook for that bill every month. And so now, this is exactly what you just talked about. This is one of those life milestones where, from a planning perspective, you get to say. What's our next move? Yeah. So this is so what a great segue. This is so this is our case study that we're going to do today. Okay. We we actually believe it or not, folks, we talked about this <laughs> before. We conversed about this before we actually came on the show. So what Jay has kind of led us into is this case study of you know you know the fifty something people. Their kids have just graduated. They've graduated college, right? Yep. So they've they are now they have and we'll we'll make the assumption that they have left home or they are in the process of leaving home and they are going on to their we're going on to their adulthood. Yeah, so, for the most part, they're out of the nest. So here, so here you are. So here you are. You're at that point. So, the you know, we'll, we'll, we're going to talk about a husband and wife. They have. We'll, we'll we'll make the assumption that they have two incomes. Sure. And they're make up a number fifty four, fifty four years old, and they're like, okay, here we are. What do we do? What are what are what are the things that we have to do now? What are the things that maybe? What are the decisions that we have to make? 
And, you know, what are the decisions we don't necessarily have to make right now? Correct. And we're going to go in, we're going to we're going to go through that and kind of lay that out and we'll kind of banter back and forth on, you know, what are the what are the things that maybe you think are a priority? One of the things that I'll, I think are a priority. And we'll do that right after we come back for our quick, break. Quick. You got it uh, right here on my FM 101.3 WMRC and the Holliston Cable Access TV. I'm not Jay Marston. I'm not and John Drohan. He is not John Drohan. However, sometimes people get us mixed up. And we're also Obviously. streaming live and on demand at the Media Center at WMRCDailyNews.com. In case you didn't know that. We'll Got be it. right back. <laughs> and you're back. Money Law, First Class Radio, WMRC, My FM 101.3, streaming live and on demand at the Media Center at WMRCDailyNews.com. Jay Marsden, Marsden Law Group, John Drohan, Main Effort Financial. We're talking milestones. We're talking about that big milestone, which is you're done. You wrote the last tuition check. The kids are hopefully heading towards the edge of the nest. You're kind of getting your place back. You're making some room. You're picking out some man cave furniture. You find yourself in the mule kick position. That's right. Let me help you over the edge there. Don't lean over there. Fly, little one. Be free. But uh, but more importantly, um, from a sense of sort of responsibility, not that that you're ever not a parent, but at this point, you can see the next signpost. And it's out there, and it's not that far, believe it or not. And we're working on a case study uh, with the assumption that you're in sort of your early 50s, you know, early to maybe yep. mid 50s. Uh, you fi- figured out that you got no more tuition checks to write, and uh, the kids are hanging around, but hopefully their hand is out less than it was a couple of years ago, and uh, you can start to think about, okay, what's our next move, right? And and what do you think about it? What do you do? I well, can tell you what I think about it on the law side, but what do you think about it on the finance side? Okay, so so I'm gonna so I I always start off these conversations with uh, the same thing we always say to our clients is like. For, with respect to finance, with respect to what we do, all roads lead to retirement. Yes. Everything, every every path you go on, every decision you make, every decision you don't make, in some way, shape, or form, directly or indirectly, is taking you to retirement. Now, you may make a decision that may take may move your retirement down the road yep. because of a poor decision or poor investment, whatever. Yep. But all ro- everything that we do is kind of to get you to retirement. And then, then you know, the next that begs the question of what is retirement? What does retirement look like? What does retirement look like for me? And the answer is, it's different for everybody. And we've talked about this a thousand times on the show that that retirement can be in it, it can come in any different form. Um, whether you 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 never work another day in your life, whether you pick up and move to the south, whether you whether you continue when you whether you stop working, they have a party for you, and then you turn around and get hired as a consultant for the same company sure, and sure. do the same thing. So so, but everything is to is designed to kind of get you there, and then essentially keep you there, right? But but the but the reason that this is so important, and you tell me if if you think if you agree, is that for a lot of folks they can't even wrap their head around the concept of even thinking about retirement. Because they have that tuition roadblock, that tuition brick wall in front of them, and everybody will tell you, "I can't. All I get, my, my my number one priority right now in this moment is to get my kids through college. Yeah. I got to make sure that they're taken care of from an educational perspective. I have to make sure I pay for their college. So you, you don't re- retirement. It's a it's it's a concept, but now now it's real. But I think a lot of that too. It kind of plays into the into the psyche of the person, right? So think about it. So if I'm I'm in my early fifties and my kids are, are are in their last year or two years of college, you you know you, you know it's as it's natural as a parent. Like you you always think of them as your kids, yeah, right. So you're thinking, oh, I just that and 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 your their whole lives, all you've done is take care of them in some way, shape, or form. And now you're just it's another way of taking care of them. You're yep. you're providing them. Maybe you're helping them pay for college. Maybe you're helping them to find a job or whatever you're doing. You're still doing your parental job. So right. so so. So you don't think about and and you know the the idea of retiring like without my kids and and what that picture looks like versus what it is taking care of, you you know you like you said you can't you can't see both of them at the same time right so now it's, it's over so now you check the box done so the tuition thing is in the rearview mirror so now it's a bad memory that's all it is don't worry about it anymore but now to your point you need to focus on the next big ticket item because that's not going away right. your kid may or may not have gone to college retirement's coming. Yeah, and that's and that's really the important thing to, to for you to kind of keep in mind long before you kind of get to this point is that that retirement's out there, and that's why you know your your planner, your, you know your lawyer, they need to remind you like, look, you're going to retire someday. I know you don't see it right now. I know yep. there's, I know that like, yeah, like the the Great Wall of China is in front of you right now, but you got to you, you you can't 
you can't ignore it. You can't, you can't like say, I'm, I'm just not going to think about retiring unless you absolutely have to. Right. So you can't say, okay, I'm not going to contribute to my 401k. I'm not going to, you know, you know, choose my job based on whether or not it's, a, I have a defined, you know, I have a pension or something like that. Like you can't like ignore retirement during these college years, because especially if your kids are spread out. I mean, you could, your kids could be in college, you know, you could have kids in college for 12 years. Yeah. If, if your kids That's are, right. you know, if you have a, you know, more than two kids and, yeah. and you know, they, they're different ages and, and some kids stay in college longer than others. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, why, so would they? Yeah. So, yeah. why wouldn't you? So, so, so for us, it's uh, and 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 in, in the Solaris Hill, you know, financial. It's all roads lead to retirement. So then I'll throw it back to you. So, as the estate planning attorney slash well, elder law attorney, but more of an estate planning attorney, where do all roads lead you to? Well, all at this point, at this for clients right now, the kids are older. All roads for us lead to, you know, are the do you want the kids involved in your planning at this point, right? So you know, you say to yourself. These are the kids that if you go back, and this, we hear this all the time, you go back and you look at your estate plan, these are the kids that you picked, your, you know, your best man in college who you haven't spoken to in 30 years, to be the guardian of these kids, right? right. So you don't need that anymore, right? So right. That's, so For all intents that's, and purposes, they're adults. All yeah. them, they're adults. So now the first question I always ask people is, so are we moving the kids up, right? So now are the kids getting the backup job to, to mom and dad, right? Yeah. Now they can make the decision. So are the kids getting the backup job to the parents? That's the first thing we talk about. And then the second thing we talk about is, even though they're out of the nest to a certain extent, even though they're flying on their own, do you want them to get your assets? Right? That's right, because you, that's a great question, right? So because you know, if, if they've if you've done some 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 solid estate planning up to this point, what do your what do your clients have? They have a they have a will, they have a trust, they have the the a joint trust, right? Yeah, or, like yeah. that pour over trust, and and in that trust. And in that will, they name the guardian of the kids. So that's going to get changed, right? Right. And then now if they've done the trust, if they've done it, you know, they, they were smart about it, they probably, and if they have assets to protect, right, at this point, they're like, look, you know, let's say my estate is worth a million dollars, you know, including all my life insurance and my property. Sure. Do I want, you know, my 24-year-old and my 22-year-old, if some God forbid, something happens to my wife and I, even though they're adults, do I want them? Do I want a million dollars to land in their? Well, lap? and you may have set out some predetermined ages, right? So without without blinking an eye, I tell everybody coming in the front door. Well, we'll set the we'll set the ages at twenty five and thirty. They get half at twenty five. They get half at thirty. It's a good starting point, and then let's figure it out from there. So now, as a parent, right, you sit down and you say to yourself, "Well, I just watched my two kids go through school, and you know, as much feigned independence as you could possibly imagine, because I'm writing all the bills, but." I've had a chance to see how they make decisions, yeah. all right? Yeah. And now I know, does my oldest child or my youngest child or whatever, the twins or whatever it is, is somebody making better decisions <laughs> than the other child? And do I still want those ages in there? Because I've had kids, I've had clients come to me and say, you know, my kid's going to grad school. He's going to start the next Microsoft. He's totally buttoned up. I don't care if he gets my money. Right. And then I have other kids say, I can't get my kid off the couch. I can't get them out of the basement, even though they're out of school. They wouldn't, do, they wouldn't know what to do with three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000. So I'm not going to give it to them. So let's make sure we can sort of button this up in such a way that they won't shoot themselves in the foot by getting the money. So from a legal perspective, that's the case, right? You're going to have that conversation. And then the other conversation is you're going to get some stuff lined up for your kids. Because you know what? Because they're adults now. Yeah. And so they need health care proxies. They need powers of attorney. Do they need a will? Probably not. It's not critical. But they at least need the ability to have somebody get involved and make decisions for That's them. That's right, because you can't do it. Something may happen. Yeah, you That's can't right. do it. So, so, yeah, so, so here they are. You know, here, here you are. Like, your kids have graduated college, and they're adults. And in your mind, you kind of think of them as adults, but... You also know if they turn around and say, "Daddy, can you come and do the?" They're gonna. You'll be like, "Of course, course I will. Of course, course I am, That's because right. you're my baby." And yep. right? yep. So that that whole idea, I and I always find that fascinating. That whole idea of like, well, you know, ten years ago we bit, we made this trust. And we were smart, and we and yep. we we knew what we were doing. And we we're like, you know what? Something happens to us. You know what? You know we don't want our fifteen year old kid, or we don't want our our guardian of our kid to get all of our money. We don't want him to get the house or anything. You know we we want we want our kids to have that. Like we want yep. we want to provide that for our kids so now our kids are no longer kids so like you know if you if you get to that point where you say okay well what now what happens can they handle you know, it can they handle yeah. it that's basically it can they handle it because and, remember it's your house it's not their house yeah so they're going to get a house and they're like 
Well, we get my and dad's house. They may not want the house, right? They're, they're 25 years old. They may not want to move out to the suburbs. They want to move out of the city. They want to move someplace across the country. Or, or, or even more, what if one of them may want the house and yeah. one of them may not, and the other one's not in a position to buy the other one out. And, you know, it's a, so well, and, and, and also, you know, they don't understand how... The, the, the sort of that that dynamic, something like that would Your work. Your kids don't understand. Well, no, but, but they don't. Like, if they don't understand, if if one sibling says to the other sibling, "I really want the house," they're not saying, "I want to take from you what is rightfully which yours." Is, which is the right? instinctive which thing is the that exact, siblings do. That's right. Exactly what I want siblings to, well, say. What am I going to get? Right. Oh, I, why don't you get that? Yeah. Your kids at the table, I want the last Twinkie. They don't split the Twinkie. They <laughs> say, get, I no, want the nothing Twinkie. Nothing shared. First no, one of the Twinkie no wins. Sharing, yeah. First one of the clicker watches what they want to watch. That's what siblings do. Right. But now, when the siblings are together, they said, look, my and dad left us this house. I've loved living here. You have no interest in being here. So let's talk through you know, what that would look like so that you don't take an already tense situation and ruin it by having the kids feel like they don't understand what the horse trading that can go on in a situation like this looks like so that everyone's treated the same, or and, and you bring people. up a good point. You know what? They may not be ready to do that. No. That may they like they may not, like you. You know, in, in the beginning, you said, "Are you, are the kids ready to come into this plan?" And you know what? They're probably not ready for that. They're no. probably, coming out of college. They're not ready because you know why? They're not thinking about that. They're nope. they're still they're still. I mean, they're they're right in the beginning. They're at the starting line. Like they're oh my God. they're at the starting line, and the gun's about to go, and they can't run fast enough. Oh, they, by, and by the way, this is their first race. Yeah, I have no idea what they're doing. That's right. No that's right. That's doing, right. And right? they're and they're psyched and they're young and they're healthy and they're like running and they're like this. Here we go. Like I'm gonna, I, I, the world is my oyster. There's yep. nothing there at this point in my mind. There is nothing I cannot do. Well, and for a lot of people, the one thing they want to do is get as far away from wherever as fast yeah. as they can. They haven't. They have. They have not yet developed the appreciation to go back and say they want to. They want to see what's out there. I think I get. I think I get why Myron and Dad landed here, and, I, and it makes sense. You know, when you're 30 I and you're doing the same thing. But I'm not. Yeah. The, everyone else said that, right? I'm yeah. getting out of whatever it is. You know. But I will say this: on the investment side, when I worked at that small mutual fund company in town, every time I sat down with clients and I said to them things like, "Hey, when did you know buying a place down in Florida? Or when did you know?" Buying a place down the Cape was for you, or a, or a second home, or a vacation, or whatever. Whatever I thought that they were doing, that I was sort of mesmerized, that they had sort of the foresight yeah. to do it. I always said, "When did when did that become real?" Right. And and their answer, time and time again, from everybody I talked to, was always, "After I get the kids through college." Yeah. Once the kids were through college, then it was back to, "It's all about me." Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's all about me. Right. And 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 you know they may, you may they may have been talking about it for ten years. They may have been That's like, exactly you know what? Right. We can't do this until the you know we we always said that we always said that with our addition when we were going to put a new kitchen in. We always said we can't do it until. Haley's school loans are paid off. Right. Like, we was like, as soon as, as soon as that's done, then, you know, and, and, and we talked about it, but we just knew it wasn't going to happen until yeah. then. So, same thing. Like, here I am, the kids are out of college, and now I can, I can you know, I can take a deep breath. Yeah. I, can, I can look in my checkbook, and I can look on my, on my bank statement. I can look yeah. online, and I can say, look, I actually have some money, right? Yep. That's right. That's right. So, so what do you do with it? All right. So, so the, 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 Figuring out kind of, you know, like adjusting my estate plan is, is important. Yep. So, so there are going to be some adjustments, and, and you, you'll make those adjustments. Do you have to make all of them at once? No, you don't have to make them all at once. No. And you can, you can say, we can table this for another time. I mean, you know. You're, what, in, if, you're infinitely more educated about the kids that you're doing the planning for because now you've seen them grow up, you've seen them make some decisions, and you have a much better sense of what they're capable of than you were when you did this plan, assuming you even did one, you know, 15 years ago when they were little. And the other thing is, you're probably, I mean, at least, you know, as I fast forward to that, I, I'm relieved. It's like, huh, okay, you know what? Now I don't have to worry about, like, if you and I die. Right. Not, well, you and I, I mean, if we were married, that would right, say that, right? But if yeah, you and different. I die and, 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 you know, the kids are 14 years old, like, yeah. that, you know, we're kind of past that. So now, That's right. you know, like, so now I don't have to worry about the guardian. I don't have to worry about, like, having to go, like, just, you know, live with my sister. And, and, yeah. and you know, yeah. so I'm, I'm kind of, we, we, you've kind of made it through that That's hurdle, right? They're, right? Bummed, they're bummed out. Yeah. But you're not <laughs> dropping right, right in the middle of, you know, their most formative. I mean, you know, it's, right. yeah, it's, it's right. you know, it's, it's, a, it's a huge weight off your shoulders that says, look, if, as long as I'm leaving them the resources, 
I hope that they can sort of stand yeah, on the, the plan, road. That, that part of the plan, the planning's not over, but that step, yeah. that hurdle has been yep. has been cleared. And that's by the way, and that's a step that keeps a lot of people from doing any planning. They say, look, I don't even know who would be the guardian. Oh, well, yeah, we've so talked they, about if that. If they just get one of them there that could be the guardian for everybody, they're thrilled. Yeah. So there's that issue. Yeah, and that and that's a whole that's a that's a whole other show. Whole that's a whole other show. Yeah. All right. So what's the next thing I do? All right. So now, okay, here I am. I have I have I have money. I have I have more money than I thought I had. And all you know, from the, we're back to the finance side. All road leads to retirement. It's like, I can I see the barn? I don't know, right? So, so that's really the first conversation yeah. that you have. Is you say, okay, well, here we are. You know, like the dust has kind of settled a little bit. What do you see? Like, what do you see in front of you? And the answer still could be, I have no idea. Like, yep. I don't know. I don't know what retire. I don't know what when I want to retire. But you know what? I'm a whole lot closer than I was 10 years ago. You know, now I'm, I'm 54 years old. And like, okay, so that means in five and a half years, that money that I've been saving in that IRA, oh, yeah. from that, I can use that money if I want to. Yep. That means that in, you know, in seven years, I can, or eight years, I can, I can actually collect Social Security. Yeah. Oh, it's that, real. It's yeah, real. That, 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 that I was like, oh, Social Security is not going to be there. Well, uh, eight years from now, I hope it's there because that, well, I may you, yeah, I may yeah, You're a five iron away. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for me, it might not be not five, five iron. I mean, yeah. it's more of a two iron. Wedge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're a wedge in that. A one-handed wedge. Um, but yeah, so you're, you're, you're at that point where you're like, look, I'm, I'm much closer than I am. So what is... And that's the first question. Last week, what does retirement look like? What do you what do you envision? And that's when people, you know, they may have been thinking about it. Maybe they haven't. Maybe they just have been sure. had their you know their college blinders on. But that's so. If they haven't, you say think about it. Like think about kind of what you're. And you don't have to decide when it's going to be, but just have a picture in your mind of what you think. And you you brought it up. The first thing is where are you going to be? Like where do yeah. you think that retirement is going to be? And I might not know the answer to that, right? Why, why might I not know the answer? Because my kid just graduated college, and that's right. You know, they I don't know where they're going to be. Exactly, exactly. That's right. That's right. But but you know what? But the question is, but but is there a possibility that you're going to be someplace, right? Yep. And maybe you just sit down and literally start, you know, designing this whole thing out and say, well, look, you know, here's where we are. We might be here, and if we know we're going to be here, you say to yourself, well, now guess what? I'm in my early fifties. So is my mortgage going to be paid off? By the time I think I'm getting ready to wrap it up, right? Because if you just signed on for a 30-year mortgage and you're 54, no. The answer is no, yep. unless you're going to really throw some huge dough at it. And if people did some refinancing to pay for college and get their kid through it, you're going to think about that. And you're going to say, well, look, if I have a mortgage and it's not going to be paid off by the time I'm 50, or by the time, by the time I retire at, let's say, 64 or 65, well, then i got to think about, well, how much equity am I going to have? Mm -hmm. Because if I'm not staying in here... Everybody thinks they're going to sell their house and leverage it to something else, but if you're carrying a three hundred thousand dollar mortgage, you're not doing that. Yeah. So the first thing you ask is you like, like you say, you're like, you, let's ask the question of what, what is in the perfect world, what do you see? Yeah. Right. And then, and then after that, you then then we evaluate and say, okay, well, what do we got? Like, what what are we looking at? And real estate is always a big thing, right? So are you going to be here? Are you going to stay here? What what does your real estate situation look like? You know, how much you know, how much you owe on your house? What does yeah. your what does your loan look like? And then we look at okay. So in order to retire, whatever your retirements look like, you're going to need money. You're going to need a lot of money. You're going to need the, the firewood theory of if you're going to make a campfire, how much firewood do you go get? Right. What's the answer? Well, a lot. Well, More than no, you need. More so than you need. So, the answer, so the, answer, the, the answer we always say is, look, go out and get as much as you think you're going to need, bring it back, and then go out and get four times as much. Yeah. And that's how much firewood you need. That's how much money you're going to need in retirement. Or... And, and, you know, people say, well, how much, you know, do I need? Do I really need? And, you know, stop, well, yeah, you know, I, I, stop asking. You yeah. need a lot. Okay? Yeah. You need a lot. Don't worry about the number. Just save a lot. You're right? going to need as you're going to need as much as you can save. And that's yeah. really the answer. Right. And then, you know, when you start backing into it and saying, OK, well, what is my what are my expenses? What do it look like? And then then you can start to put a hard number on it. You can say, all right, well, you're obviously not going to save that much money. Right. And therefore, maybe we have to adjust investments or maybe we have to think of an alternate look of what retirement looks like because you're not going to be able to make you're not going to be able to generate a hundred thousand dollars a year that's right. you know in 10 years so that you just make, you're not going to be able to do that you know given what we have in front of us so that's what we look at we look at like what we have and we look at like what our ability is to have more of that that's right and so the first thing if they're in if you're in some type of an employer-sponsored plan meaning like a 401k or a 403b, or if you're a government employee and you have a 457, something that you may not have been putting as much money as they allow you to put in. Time to turn up the it volume. It is time to crank that up. Yes. Like, and, and crank it up 
to at, to the you know to almost to a fault. Now, does that mean you're not going to like enjoy yourself and you're not going to go on vacations? You're not going to do this. But guess what? You're not paying for anymore. For the most part, you're not paying college tuition yeah. anymore. That's found. We you've used the phrase manufactured money countless times on the show, and it's a great concept because this is the the this is potentially. The most money you'll ever manufacture, right? I mean, <laughs> right, right. You know, you, your you, plant is at full capacity. That's right. right now. That's right. You yeah. are running on all <laughs> cylinders right now. The lights aren't turning off. There isn't even a lock on the door. It's twenty four seven right now because that's a big tuition check that you wrote and you didn't even think you were gonna, prior to going on going. Your kids go to college. You say, "Where's the money going to come from?" And yeah. where does it come from? You always find it. Yep. You found it. You found the money. So keep finding it. You've, yeah. So so if you're not maxing out your 401k and 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 you want to use all of your your all of your resources, all of your so so if let's say one person's working and they have a 401k and they're not maxing out. Remember, I'm 50 years, I'm over 50, right? So what can I do? I can catch up, yep. right? So I can yep. add, I can add 18,000 plus six, right? So I, so I can go 24 thousand dollars into my 401k, which conveniently is almost the same exact amount of money that you might have been pumping into a state school tuition Who's, bill. Who knows? Who knows? Right? I mean, just a suggestion, right? Just so a so if I can do that, it doesn't matter how much money I make, I can put 24 into my 401k. If my wife is working. She has a 401k. Hey, she's over 52. You don't look it, honey, but you but you're over 50. <laughs> she can put in twenty-four thousand dollars. That's forty-eight thousand dollars that I can put in to my four into two 401ks or two employer-sponsored plans that I may not have been doing before. Almost fifty thousand dollars. Let's do the math on that, right? So if I'm 54 and I'm gonna do, let's say I'm doing this for 10 years or eleven years, that's sixty thousand dollars. That's 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 Fifty-five thousand to sixty thousand yeah. dollars. If I if I wait for tw- eleven to twelve years, without even any return, without any even any gains, that's sixty thousand dollars that I can save. Or, that's right. I'm sorry, six hundred thousand dollars. What am I talking about? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but it's six hundred thousand dollars on top of what you've hopefully already saved. Right. That's right. So if your bogey was two million, between the six hundred that you potentially save over the course of the next number of years and what you've already put away, you're in the ballpark. You're in the ballpark. Yeah, you're you're in the ballpark for you're, you're what you're doing is you're 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 enabling yourself to have to have flexibility because one of the you know when we talk about like what your retirement plan is going to look like you're you're you know most likely you're going to get social security you may have some sort of a pension right Maybe. so you, there may be some fixed income there may be some some guaranteed income that's coming in in retirement now Social Security, most likely pension, that depends on what your job was. So everything else is going to be driven by one of two things. It's either going to be the the income that you generate from your assets, yeah. or it's going to be you doing a little bit more work. Yeah, yeah right. you, you earning like more earned income that you're going to have in retirement. Well, and the question that I always put on the table to, to talk to people about these issues is you have to decide when do you want to work, right? Yeah. If you, because if, you, if the goal is to get out at 65, then you want to get out. You don't want to go back at 77. Right, you mm-hmm. want to be done. You want to you, know, you want to wrap it up. Some people we've talked about this conceptually on the show. Forget the numbers. Define what you think your retirement's going to look like. Yeah. You know, for a lot of people, for a lot of people, for for all kinds of reasons, retirement is not. I stop working. Retirement is I work my full time job at blah 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 company, and then I wrapped it up. And then I did something part time until I was a certain age, and, and then and then you may and, and you know and right now you may not know what that looks. That's like. That's right. Right now you may say you that may you may evolve to that right. So until you get you know as you, as you're starting to like kind of you know swim out in the open water you know you're not you're not you're not fighting with all the other fish you know you're yep. you're you know the the, the bills have kind of subsided. You've swimming in that open water. Now it's like, okay, well, what do I want? Yeah. What do I want? You know, so what do I want my, my retirement to look like? When do I want to retire? I don't know the answer to that question, but I, I'm, I'm going to, you know what? That's a fun thing to think about, yeah, right? That's now a, it's definitely fun. Yeah, that's, that's a fun thing to think fun. about. So I'm not going to think about it right now, but I'm going to think about it soon. Don't yeah. worry. And then, but then it's like, then you brought up the other point. Like, okay, hey, we've been talking about this for 10 years. Are we going to buy a place in Cape Cod or not? Right. Are we going to Are we going to get a house in the mountains or right. not? Buy a place in Maine. Whatever are we going it to do is, Are we going right. to do those vacations that we have been talking about for the last fifteen years or not? Right? right. Are we going to go to Napa? Are we going to go to Europe? Are we going to go to Italy? You know, are we going to Are we going to Are we going to do those things? And those become part of this whole planning process. Those become Those become things like okay, hey, if we're going to do this. Let's make sure that we earmark money for that. Let's make sure that we we put aside assets in order to do in order to accomplish those goals. Because now now this this whole plan is starting to look 
is starting to become more of a reality. It, right. It's not a. It's not this. Eh, we'll talk about it, or we'll think about it, or we'll really put emphasis on it after kids get out of school. Well, that's right. Well, but, but that's always been the thing. The, the this tuition thing, because it's 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 sort of beat into your into your noggin over the course of. Of, of 18 years when you have a kid. I mean, the minute, as soon as you have a kid, Fidelity finds you and sends you a thing about saving money in a 529 plan. And you get all these things that come up. So you're so consumed with that tuition responsibility and making sure that you prepare your kid for the next, you know, the next step of their own life. Well, you did that. So pat yourself on the back, congratulate yourself, but now use it as a turning point to then say, so where, where do we go now? Because yeah. we're all done. We did that. We've, we've, you know, and some people say, well, it's undergrad and grad. Some people say, well, I didn't do that. You know, but at some point, you've got to say to yourself, guys, it's out there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's within a decade or slightly more than that. And, and you have to. It could be, and, right? And, you've, and I guess the point is you've earned the right to start asking these questions, right? right? So, you, so what have we done? We've, we've updated our estate plan, right? We've, we've made some yeah, updates be, to our estate be, plan. If need be, yep. We've identified the fact that we are going to now save money as much as we possibly can to, into retirement in some way, shape, or form, whatever, whatever that vehicle that we're, that we're able to do that. My favorite vehicle, you know, you, know, it's, you know, it's near and dear to my heart. Near and dear to my heart is two people. <laughs> Sitting down, this, actually, this almost brings a tear to my eye. They write that last tuition check. Everybody celebrates. They have graduation parties. They do everything. And there just happens to be a representative from Solaris Hill Advisors <laughs> when the right smoke, behind <laughs> When the smoke clears next morning, there's a knock on the door, and somebody says to them, what you ought to do is open up a brokerage account, <laughs> my favorite account of all accounts, right, a brokerage account. And, and, and really, more importantly, you ought to take one person's W-2 income that would normally show up in their checking account, and you direct deposit that right into that brand spanking new shiny brokerage account. Okay, why why would I do that? Or I'll ask you the question. So would I do that at, at the expense of not maxing out my four hundred one k? No, no, I'm like, yes, oh, no. absolutely not, okay. absolutely no. First and foremost, load up the retirement yeah. account so, all, so, all, all, all day long. So Jay is absolutely correct. However, the the we are making the assumption that you are doing you are putting for all of your qualified money, all the money that you can that you can save tax deferred or in a pre tax basis, you are doing that. So you've you've exhausted the option of okay, I have a four hundred one k, I can put I, I can max out my four hundred one k. That's right. And let's say. Hey, let's say you 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 can do it. Let's say you are a solid budgeted group, and you guys make a, under one hundred eighty thousand dollars between the two of you. Yeah. And both of you maxing out your four hundred one k. Guess what else you can do? I can. You can each do Roth IRAs. Yeah. Right. And guess what? You're over fifty. You can put in sixty five hundred dollars yeah. each. Right. Into a Roth. So that's another thirteen thousand dollars a year that you can put into something that's tax deferred. Meaning I ain't paying taxes on it right now, and it's earmarked for college. And the Roth has. We won't go into like the details of the Roth, but Roth has some stipulation. You got to wait five years, but that's okay because you're going to wait five years. You, that's you're, right. you're in a position to wait five years. So let's say you've kind of done all that. Then the next thing you do is you say, look, we can save more money. Let's save it. And then, and, and what's important about it is like, if this money, because remember, all investments have to have a purpose. All investments yeah, yeah. have to have a reason for it and they have to have an end state, right? So if this money is for retirement and we think we're going to retire in between 10 and 15 years or 10 and 12 years, what, how do I invest that money? Well, in all, well, you, that's exactly, you, you, have a, you have a conversation with yourself that says, this money that we're just pounding into this brokerage account is for some purpose. Yep. Now, that purpose might be, right, might be a retirement property, might be a vacation property, it might be a multifamily property, it might be a whole bunch of things. But in addition to that, what also you're doing is, I, I've always advocated this idea of separating out the working capital from this other piece of your portfolio. And I guess my point is, you've been paying a tuition bill for four years, maybe six years, maybe longer. And now you never had that money. Hmm. It never existed, right? So let's not bring it back into the fold because once you have money, you tend to find a place for it, sure. right? Yep. So what I love is the idea of, of hiding money, hiding it, in <laughs> yeah. a bro hiding it in a brokerage <laughs> account so that you can see every month, we just put away $10,000. We just put away $10,000. We just put away $10,000. That's $10, funny because Jay dresses up like David Copperfield when he comes. He says, watch this. Magic see that money, money. And it's Magic. gone. Yep. And Disappears. It's gone. Guess yeah. where it shows? Yeah. Over here. <laughs> and I pull a broker's statement out of your ear. And I go, here you go. That's where it is. But that's, and you can always get at it. I'm not saying put it away. I'm not saying tie it up. Well, right. Because you're talking, this account you're talking about, it's a liquid account. It's a liquid account. Do anything you want to do with it. I can buy it today. I can sell it yep. tomorrow. But I it, can. But it's just not your account. It's not your bank account. 
No. You forget you even have it, right? No, and, and, and if it's for a purpose, right? So if it's for, and, and when we say a purpose, that means we're going to attach a time horizon to it. We're going to attach a risk, a yep. risk tolerance to it. So if it's, if it's a 10 year play, right? If it's, if it's going to mirror what I'm investing in my retirement account, because yep. that money, and now that money, and you know, you, you brought up like kind of segregating things out. So maybe in, in this sleeve, this part of it, of my 10,000, we'll use 10,000 as our sure. number, right? Yeah. $10,000 of the, say, let's say, let's say 30% of it or $3,000 is going towards 10 year retirement. Like I'm not using yeah. that. I'm not, I'm leaving that money for 10 years. Our money. So I'm guess not, what? That money is going to be invested very similarly to the way I invest my, my retirement money. It, I'm probably going to be more aggressive. I'm probably going to have more equities. I'm probably going to have less bonds, less fixed income. Right. And that's, that's right. going to, I, I want that. I'm giving that, that's a 10 year play. Now, the next sleeve may be, hey, that may be money that I may use. I'm, I'm not going to use it tomorrow. No. I'm not going to use it in two years. But you know what? I may be using it sooner rather than yeah, later. We're really hot to trot on a piece of property. There you go. So we're going to have this 5000 of the three th of the 10000 So three goes to the aggressive piece. 5000 we keep as something of a fixed income investment, yep. right? Because I know it's there. And if a, if a place fell out of the sky tomorrow... We'd want to be able to go someplace to get. So that what money. am I? I'm assuming some risk on. That. I'm assuming, of course, you know, anytime I invest in the market, I assume risk, right? Yeah. So, so I'm assuming a little bit of risk on that, in the sense that, you know, if it's in fixed, if the interest rates come up, that portfolio could go down. But it's not the same kind of risk, not the same level of risk as that, as that pure stock, pure pure stock or equity right. position, right? So I say, okay, if. And, and so at, at, the, at the, the risk I'm taking, because I'm taking this risk, it's going to pay me a little bit more money than if I let it just sit in my savings account, right? That's right. I mean, I don't, the interest rates, are, they all suck. So I can't, like, put, there's no CDs or anything out there that's going to pay me worth anything that's, you know, to keep it. So this money is like, hey, I may use this tomorrow. Yep. I may use this in five years. I don't know. So because I don't know, I'm going to assume a little bit of risk, but I don't want to assume a lot of risk because right. if, you know, the worst case scenario, if I, if I dump it in the market and the market drops and I put in, you know, let's say I have $50,000 in there and 50 turns into 35 and yeah, then I go to take, happy. that's, yeah, that's, that, that, that's not ideal. No, and, if, and if you had a line up for a piece of property, then, you know, you, you, you had 15 for the down payment, now you get 35, that's you're right. not happy about it. You know, you got to put more money on the table. It's a hassle. That's right. So, so there you go. So then, so, th so that's $8,000. So what am I doing with the last 20%? Cash. Cash, right? Cash. Why? Why? Because you might need it. Emergency. Because Something you don't because you don't know, right? That's right. And guess what? Guess what you don't have anymore? You don't have kids in the house. That's right. So guess what you have a whole lot more of now? Time. Yeah. You have time. So we brought this up. Maybe now's the time where we go on vacation. Or maybe this is money that I'm gonna use because now my kids are out of the house and maybe my kids are getting maybe my kid gets a job in Chicago. Yeah. Or maybe my kid gets a job in Atlanta. And you're like, hey, you know what? If I want to see my kids, or because my kid has some student loans and my kids are not making a lot of money and I want them to come home for Christmas, I may have to write a check and say, yeah. hey, guess what? You know, I, I, I can dad's, you picking, up, dad's yeah. picking up the tab. Yeah. Because they never really go away, right? right? They never totally go away. And that's money that allows you now that you enter this phase of your life is to kind of make sure that you can still, you know, you, you, everybody's still at arm's reach. Well, and if you did that, if, you know, if working off the assumption, again, that's, you know, 120 grand, you know, that, that, doesn't, mean, that doesn't mean people are going to put 120 grand a year away and save. That's hard to do, right? But if you had two people, high income earners, you know, somebody, you, it, it's, not, it's not unrealistic, nope. right? So again, remember, you take this through its logical conclusion at the end of the year without doing anything, you've put away, you know, 24, 25 grand in cash for those things that you just mentioned. We're not even talking about touching your other investments. You just have twenty-four grand That's right. kicking around in cash. And if you did it for two years in a row, you'd have close to fifty grand in cash. And a lot of people would say, if I had fifty grand in cash, I don't think I'd ever be able to spend fifty grand in cash. And then on top of that, you had this other part of your portfolio that was invested and put to work, you know, in a laddered fashion. So that if you needed to pick up more money than the fifty, you'd have it in a bond portfolio, some fixed income portfolio that you'd pull from. So I you, love it when you talk like that. You like that? Yeah. So this so this but I mean this really you know, this is how you, you, you know, you mentioned earlier, you know, the concept of saving X amount of dollars so that over the course of the next 10 or 15 or maybe 20 years, you find yourself with a pile of money, right? Mm. Th this, to me, I understand the concept, right? Where I find a lot of people struggle is they don't necessarily understand mechanically how do I get there. And yeah. you just made it crystal clear, which is the first thing you do is get it out of your bank account, right? Because mm. money sitting in your checking account 
can't really work all that hard, right? Yeah. As much as you think it's going to work hard, it's not going to work hard. Okay, it's going to sit there. It's going to do a. It's going to do a whole heck of what your kids probably do when they were home: sit around on the couch and do nothing, <laughs> right? So now it's, it's outwork. You, you want to like the kid, <laughs> like the kids getting out of the nest. You have to get your money out of the nest, yeah. right? You got to put your money to work. You got to put it in the real world, right? Yeah. So that's where. Putting it into this brokerage account is like literally putting them, like putting them in an internship yeah. in another state somewhere far away. Go now they got to go to work. Go get them, Tiger. Now they got to go to work, <laughs> and then they're going to do work. And when they work, they come back and they're better, right? And so is your money. When you put it away and it works, hopefully it works well, and it comes back and it's better. And why is it better? Because there's more of it, right? Because because they brought their friends, and that's yeah. what we. That's right. They that's brought right. their friends home. <laughs> yeah. they, your kids come home, yeah. bring all their friends. When you bring your money back, you want your he money to bring his friends. its friends. Then yeah. you're very happy to have yeah. them hanging around. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, they look like him. Hopefully, they, they're Benjamin Franklin. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Hopefully, they look like a lot of older, white individuals who established the country a bajillion years oh, ago. Right. They look like the Franklins yeah. and the Hamiltons well, of the world. Like Franklin and that's Hamilton. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's what, what are they called? Dead presidents, right? That's the old, right. Dead, the old dead presidents, right? That's so, so that's what you want. You want those guys to come back and do that whole piece of it. And that's, that's what makes it work. Although Franklin and Hamilton, neither were presidents. That's true. Yeah, they That's weren't. True. They, they should have been. They, well, they, they were the two well, smartest guys in the bunch. Well, yeah, they, they were. They, they were the two they, smartest. They guys had in some the issues over seas in France. He, he was did, a bit of a yeah. bit of a bon vivant, I think <laughs> they call that. Yeah, I yeah. think yeah. Alexander did as well. Yeah, 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 yeah like, around. He had a couple issues around. in New York. Yeah, yeah. he might have got around. He might have <laughs> got around. He might have <laughs> around. So that's what happens. So those those are what you those are the things you want to do. You want to. I just think mechanically, understanding how you set it up because you see it all the time. People say. Oh, you know, they walk in the front door and they go, oh, you know, the kids are out of school now and they, we don't have to pay tuition bills anymore. And so we have all this money and all that money needs to go work hard. You know what you need, though? You need you need a you need someone to light a fire under your fourth point of contact like you because because at that point you're you feel like you may have a lot of time to retirement. You may feel like I got. Wow. I'm like, I have a, I have such a weight off my shoulders. But you don't. No, you don't. You don't. And the sooner you get back on track, and 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 this is this is you're a different person ten years than you were ten years ago. Yeah. Now you're like now I'm like I can do this. Like I can start really saving money. Really, really like like getting my getting getting my my finances organized to the point where I'm going to be able to actually pull this off. Actually, well, and, and you know what's going to happen, and you know, and assuming that you don't pay as much attention to it as we think you should, I'm going to tell you right now. Here's what's going to happen. One of your friends is going to retire. Yeah. All right. I don't know who the first one's going to be, yeah. but somebody's going to retire. And you're going to look wistfully across the aisle at them and say, Yeah, you're going to be at that party. How come? Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and someone's going to drop on you with the barbecue. Oh, by the way, I'm, uh, I'm wrapping it up. I did yeah. 38 years at whatever company I was at. I'm done. And I'm ready to pull the trigger. I'm done. And uh, we're, we're, we're moving to the Cape full time. We're we moving to Maine. We just bought a house in South Carolina. Yep. yep. And, and you're going to look at that and go, Wait a minute, we, Ooh, honey. Yeah, wait yeah. a minute, because you know we we talked about it. we talked about a lot of that stuff. Are we doing that? I thought you were in charge I'm of that. You, you thought can, I was in charge of that. You can I do thought it. you were doing it. I thought you, you were doing it. You can do it. Now is the time. If if this is kind of, I think, in a lot of respects, I hate to say it this way, I hate to be doom and gloom. This is your last chance. This is your last chance. Well, it's your last chance to, to get really on influence it without yeah. kind of just being influenced by by life, right? Well, it, it's your last chance to do it without having to make, I think, in many cases, depending on how prepared you are at this point, but it's really the last time for you to make some... some the tweaking will have a huge impact if you do it now. Yeah. The, long, you, the longer you wait after this mock, you know, it, it becomes really a case of you are letting events control you as opposed to you controlling and you may, events. And you may, you know, and you may have to compromise at that point. You know, you say, well... We maybe we we aren't going to be able to get the ski house in That's New right. Hampshire, Cape. Or we're not going to buy. We're going to rent. We're yeah. not going to. You know now. You, so this is yeah, your so chance you kind to of lose really... some. You may lose some of your options. And you know what? You may not. You may not have any options. You may. You may be just. You may be just like. Hey, now I can. We can pay off that debt. Now yep. we can. Now we can pay off that home equity loan that we used. You know that we used on our house that we ain't going to leave. They're going to drag us out feet first because we had to do that to help pay for the kids for school. And if that's the case, that's that's great that's too. Fine. That's what yeah, you that's, want to do. That's, that's fine. exactly right. Yeah. So, so you know, I mean, not everybody's going to save like you know one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. Some people are going to you're going to you're going to be able to save something. You're going to be able you to save. save you more. save fifty. You save fifty. It's five hundred grand for ten right. years. Five hundred grand, half a million dollars, and then you're going to take that fifty. You're going to turn around and you're going to pay it right back to yourself at some other point in time. What better way to do it? What, what better, better way to do it? Ah, oh, legendary. Right, I think stuff, this buddy. barbecue's over. I think this is it. Barbecue's yeah. over. We're getting chased out as usual. Uh, last ones to leave. 
First one's to get here, last one's to leave. We got here at 7. Yep, that's right, that's right. <laughs> this thing ends at 8 o'clock, what? <laughs> so uh, I hope conceptually it was helpful. You know, we certainly could have talked about numbers and backed up and a bunch of stuff like that. But, you know, half of the planning that you're going to talk about with yourself and your spouse and your family, it's conceptual. you gotta, you got to have the idea before you actually put exactly. the numbers behind it. So, exactly. Uh, so think about it long and hard. And uh, if you want to talk about it, if you bump into us at a barbecue, wait until we're uh, three or four in. You get much better advice, much better guidance. and uh, much, Yeah, we're much more wide open. Yeah, yeah, yeah much more, much <laughs> more <laughs> open to bad we're things. We're going to sugarcoat it for you. That's, yeah. right, that's right, that's right. No sugarcoating. Oh, listen, brother, you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. 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 Don't, don't, don't retire. Don't retire. <laughs> uh, you listen to Money Law First Class Radio on MyFM 101.3, Jay Marsden, Marsden Law Group, John Droham, Manning for Financial, and also streaming live on demand at the Media Center at WMRCDailyNews.com. Christian at HCAT, keeping us real, making us look handsome. And uh, have a great 4th of July, everybody, and we will see you next week.